A school district in Canada would like people to believe that they've made changes that prevent Canadian students from being propagandized by China's government through Confucius Institutes, but we've obtained exclusive documents that will show you otherwise. Drea Humphrey here with Rebel News. Now, if you're familiar with some of my reports, then you know I've shed light on the concerning level of influence communist China has over our country, including over our children through Canadian schools. Now, a primary way this occurs is through Confucius Institutes. These extracurricular programs are offered to Canadian schools as free language programming. But you know the saying, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Well, laced throughout these seemingly fabulous free classes and language programs is a good dose of propaganda and falsehoods. Previously, I interviewed a Chinese-Canadian investigative filmmaker, Doris Liu, who has been investigating the problem of school boards that provide a captive audience of Canadian children to be brainwashed by China's government, you know, so that they can be conditioned to adorn the wonders of communism. Needless to say, the lessons on how China's regime has been persecuting Tibetans, Uyghurs, Falun Gong, and Christians have been omitted from the lessons. Yet with all the controversy that surrounds the Confucius Institute's programs funded by China that appear to be indoctrinating our children, one school district hopes a switch up of the name and the donors will convince us to happily look the other way. Tri-City News reports that in British Columbia, School District 43 has removed the name Confucius from the Confucius Institute to better reflect how the language and cultural program operates and is funded according to SD43's top official. Now, the district superintendent, Patricia Gartland, told trustees on October 13th that School District 43's popular after-school program is no longer funded by Hanban, China's education ministry, and the roughly $300,000 in annual grants for teachers and materials will now be coming from the South China Normal University in Guangzhou, China. Oh, well, there you go. So now the funding will still come from the Chinese government, but first it will go through a state-funded university. I see nothing at all to see here, folks. Now, something sounded awfully fishy here, and that's why we at Rebel News investigated this further. We filed an access to information request into that school board to find out just how deep China's influence really goes there, and I have several exclusive internal school board documents to report to you today. Now, starting here on the very first page of the documents, we see that the Port Coquitlam School Board, which is in School District 43, confirms that the Confucius Institute still exists and are in fact in operation. It has been determined that no formal rebranding of the Confucius Institute in Coquitlam has occurred. We recognize the news article referenced in your request. You guys know the one that I already highlighted to you just a minute ago. Well, that article has suggested that the name Chinese Language and Cultural Institute in Coquitlam represents a rebranding, but the district has in fact not rebranded the program. The district recognizes that the initial information Information provided to the news outlet used the phrase name change, but this was in error and is subsequently corrected. The district has added the name Chinese Language and Cultural Institute to help clarify the role of the program, but the name Confucius Institute in Coquitlam is still in use. Hmm. And look here. A little bit further on in what we received, we have a letter from Chinese government addressed to Superintendent Patricia Gartland explaining the new setup of the Confucius Institutes, that it's basically the same as always, just they're getting their CCP money through a different means, that's all. Now, after a greeting to Gartland, the letter reads, 
I would also like to take this opportunity to update you about the plan to establish a non-governmental charitable foundation that will serve and support Confucius Institutes worldwide in the future. During the 2019 International Chinese Language Education Conference, a general consensus was reached to advance this proposal. Several Confucius Institute partners, universities with rich experience in educational exchange, such as Peking University, Fudan University, and Beijing Language and Cultural University, together with a number of corporations and social organizations in China, have jointly initiated the formation of the Chinese International Education Foundation, a non-governmental foundation that will assume the corporation and support of Confucius Institutes worldwide. Huh? So basically, let's just shuffle around the support and hope nobody asks any questions. Now, Speaking about questions, what about this? In the middle of what we keep getting told is this deadly pandemic, the school board is anticipating 130 new arrivals for January and February, right in cold and flu season. Now that's odd, don't you think? Especially since Justin Trudeau keeps telling us that the borders are closed and that we can't travel even for things like funerals and weddings. Oh, but anything goes, I guess, when it comes to Confucius Institutes. Now, we also see here some talking points on the Confucius Institute that should make any parent second guess just what exactly is going on in that free after school language program you signed your kiddo up for. We look forward to transforming the Confucius Institute into its new configuration with the support of South China Normal University in Guangzhou, China. Now look at here at some of the goals with the programs here. Now the very first goal is to develop all students as global citizens. I'm sorry, what? The way China is using language lessons to do that reminds me of how Justin Trudeau is using COVID-19 as a tool to develop all Canadians into citizens of a global socialist agenda called the Great Reset. It's odd that the goal of actually teaching the students Mandarin is fourth on the list of goals. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. And check out how much money the school board actually received in grants for the programs they want us to believe have nothing in it for China's government. Now look at the grants received, 267,299 US, and that's over 352,000 Canadian. The document also lists off the Confucius Institute activities that are funded, including Confucius Day and the annual Confucius Conference, which are basically nothing but Chinese propaganda exercises. Now, you know what's even more concerning than the amount of money China's government has poured in to our school systems over the years so that, I guess, kids can become global citizens that would make President Xi Jinping proud is that you don't even have to be a BC certified teacher to get around the students to teach this stuff. In an email from Ken Hoff, the Assistant Director, Communications and Community Relations, FOI officer for School District 43, it reads that teachers in the after-school Mandarin language and cultural programs are qualified based on experience and or certifications and criminal record checks are required. It is not a requirement for a voluntary after-school program that teachers hold a BC government teaching certificate. They are not teaching within the BC public school system. No, they're not teaching within the BC school system. That is clear, but they are teaching something and they are teaching our students. Now, rest assured, we will keep you informed on this and we'll keep investigating. This isn't the only school board in Canada taking Chinese money to give Chinese propagandists access to Canadian kids. Drea Humphrey for Rebel News. Diving deep into concerning matters like the influence Confucius Institutes have over our students takes a lot of time and it doesn't come cheap. Now, if you appreciate our investigative journalism, we could use your help to be able to keep obtaining exclusive documents like the ones you saw in this report. So please head to rebelinvestigates.com. We appreciate your support.